And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle and Murdy, and today's topic is disaster. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y, creative.co. Be sure to check out the links at the top of our um, website for the social media links and all those other things. And be sure to join our Discord link in the top of the description below. So, today we're talking about disaster. And it made me think of the poem by Rudyard Kipling. And there's a line from If, which is that poem. And it says, well... It says a lot of things, and you should go read the things, but it says, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, and it ends with, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and what is more, you'll be a man, my son. Triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. What a fantastic concept. And I've been trying to really focus on that. Because we have had an enormous amount of triumph the last month and a half. In fact, it has been huge wins across the board, important wins, things that we needed for the company's success long term. And now we're dealing with a little bit of disaster. And I need to be able to smooth those two things together. And it is a good thing we've had a triumph at last couple of months because this is going to help mitigate some of the fallout from this disaster. And what the disaster is, for those of you who can tell from the website, we are out of Americano. And we will be out of Americano for probably the next two to three weeks. And that's a problem. Now, how did this happen, you might say? It's a complicated question, and it's a complicated answer. But the short version is this. We have to fix our database. We have to fix our tools. The database itself needs to be corrected, and it needs to be rebuilt better. And we can build it better. We really can. We just haven't had the time to. And this has now created a very interesting financial example and financial incentive to do it now or do it very soon because this issue, being out of Americana for two to three weeks, is going to cost us $20,000 potentially in lost revenue and it's going to cost us $40,000 in lost opportunity costs. So there is a lot of issues associated with this particular problem. Obviously, for some background, Americano makes up about 62 to 65% of our sales by square footage. And that's kind of a weird way to think about it, I guess, squares, sales per square footage. But it makes the most sense when you're thinking about buying leather, right? So when we buy our leather, we buy it by the square foot. So we have to analyze it in that term. So we buy a lot of Americano. And with our new transition to the new tannery, it's been an adjustment. And this, this is part of this transition that just kind of didn't go quite right. And part of the reason it didn't go quite right was no fault of the tanneries, and it was really, I would say, no necessarily fault of our own. It was just a mistake that happened in our database. So to give you some more background, when we order materials, they, we get put them in the system as an incoming order. When we receive those, we mark what we got in and how long it took to get here. And then the system uses that to calculate expected lead times and quantities, and then it uses that based off of what we sell to deduct from the current inventory quantity from what we have on the shelf, and it, artificially, I should say, it does it, it does it digitally, virtually it deducts it from the shelf. And then when we get too low, it recommends that we reorder at a point where it thinks that it, it balances the idea of the, the lead time and the quantity we're using, and it kind of helps predict out how long we're going to need more and things like that. And obviously, bulk orders can throw off that number, um, but we've built it pretty wisely, I would say, and that the system works most of the time perfectly. Now, one of the issues is that historically, when we ordered from our previous tannery, the mills that we were getting were somewhere between 1,800 and 2,200 square feet. And the mills from our new tannery are smaller. They're somewhere between 1,000, well, they're more like a 1,300 square feet, right? So the problem is the system isn't quite smart enough to know the difference, that, or it hadn't quite been smart enough to know the difference between those two mills. And moreover, the, the recent tannery, they had a, a, the first real batch of, of the material that we got they had only given us 1,000 square feet because out of that mill of 1,300 square feet, a, a portion of it, 19 hides, they didn't think were good enough to give us. And so rather than charging us for them, they, they didn't give it to us and they didn't charge us for it. We appreciate that we want that, right? We want poor quality to not be sent to us to pay for. But more importantly, it meant that our mill was even shorter than normal, right? So it was half of what we'd expected it to be, at least what the system expected it to be. On top of that, Espresso and Americano have slightly different cutting efficiencies. And here's what I mean by that. 
when we think about the hide coming in, the hide has imperfections all over it, right? Cows live very interesting lives and their skin shows it. So when we look at the hide of the animal and we're trying to figure out how to best position the what we need to cut out of them, right? Because we take the stencils, which are clear uh, vinyl that we use to identify. They're, they're the same shapes as the flat versions of the product. We lay them out on the hide and we try to puzzle out the most efficient use of the hide based off what the system has predicted that we need to cut so that we have some on the inventory shelf. So when we may need to make them, we can pull them off the inventory shelf. So that's how the system works in an ideal world. But the problem is this, that cutting is a bit of a, it's a bit of an art, right? It's not really an exact science. And so we've created some tools to help analyze how effective we are at cutting the hides, right? The yield we're getting out of the hides in usable cuttable materials. So when you, you weigh the hide before it starts, right? We weigh the hide. So we have a, starting weight then we weigh the trash and we weigh the scrap and the scrap is stuff that we think we can use later potentially for smaller items like accessories often come out of that right and then we look at what we cut and so the system can determine okay how much of the well let's say it's a 25 square foot hide let's say it's you know roughly how much of the 180 ounces that you started with how much of that went into the trash and how much of that went into scrap? The rest of it then goes into the A grade, right? So into the core product line. And it can analyze that cutting efficiency. The problem is the cutting efficiency has shifted between the Espresso and the Americano because the Americano is better leather and it's better yields. But the system hasn't quite updated and adapted to those better yields or those different yields, I should say. And so when we're deducting things from inventory, it's not deducting the correct number. And so because of this confluence of multiple events, this perfect storm of things, we ran out way sooner than we thought we were going to. And the tannery, bless their heart, is doing their very best to get it to us as fast as humanly possible. But leather takes time to process. You can't just, you know, it's not like, it's not like a, you can't put it in the microwave to make it, right? Like it, it takes weeks of dying and, and, and waiting and drying and applying, you know, additional things to it. So it's not going to happen any faster because it can't happen any faster. Like I said, Americano makes 65% of, of our sales by square footage, which means that being out of it or being delayed on it is a big problem. Now, I was at my meeting with my, my CEO friends um, Friday of, was it last week, maybe two weeks ago? And one of the things, most of them in that group, because we're Milwaukee, most of them are in manufacturing for business to business sales, right? They sell things to other businesses. And it's funny because sitting in that meeting, I'm listening to them talk about their lead times for their products. So they're ordering stuff. They're, to their customers, their lead times are like 20 weeks, 50 weeks, 100 weeks, right? Two years that customer is going to have to wait to get their product. And I'm thinking about how when we get out to four days, when, we have, when people have to wait four days for their product to ship, that's when we start to get emails with customers canceling, changing orders, asking where their order is, things like that. So for us, our lead, our customers expect very, very quick turnaround. And my group, when I was telling about this, they were like shocked. They're like, don't you make a custom product that's made to order for that person and they want it in three days, right? But that's what happens, right? That's the reality of the market, right? The, the demand has been that we produce our products very, very quickly. And customers aren't willing to wait, right? The world we live in, the Amazon world we live in means that people expect their product now. When they want something, they want it, and they don't want to wait for it. And unfortunately, we have to cater to that market, right? We can't just say, well, too bad, you have to wait, because they're the ones with the money. So it's the golden rule. He with all the gold makes all the rules. And in that regard, we have to be able to say, okay, you know, some people might go, well, two to three weeks isn't that long of a backlog. It's not like you're waiting a long time for your product. And I would say, I agree, but the customer doesn't. And I can tell that the customer doesn't because we've put now on all of the web pages and all the product pages that Americano is back order two to three weeks. We have it set up so that there's an email that gets sent to them. Theoretically, we're still working on fine tuning that. It didn't send to a couple of people. We got to figure out that. But we have an email that's going out to people that says, for those who ordered Americano, hey, just in case you didn't see this, this is going to be back order two to three weeks. We're happy to help switch colors. We're happy to, you know, work that. But we just want you to know. Because we have done that, we did that on the 10th, I think. We have seen a significant drop off in sales immediately. So I'm pretty confident that that's why it is. I mean, we can wonder, and obviously there's no way to know for sure, but the timing of when we put on the website that Americano was back ordered two, three weeks, and then the timing of when the sales just dropped off a cliff, it, it, that's what it has to be. 
it was such a it was such an aggressive and immediate response. So the answer is yes. People aren't willing to wait. They're not willing to wait. And we have to accommodate for that. Now there's good news in all of this because why not find the silver lining in every cloud? Because of the drop off in sales, we will probably be much better at getting caught up pretty, pretty briskly. We weren't that far behind. I think actually on Friday of last week, we were finishing orders from Thursday. Um, so, I mean, not all of them went out, but we were working through orders on Thursday. So we'd been pretty close to caught up at that point, And we worked really diligently over the last week and a half to do that. Um, and I think by the point that this podcast actually is posted, we will probably be back to the point where we will basically be caught up to doing stuff from the day prior, which is where I like to be. I like to be that because it gives us a little margin when things change. However, there's a problem with that too. The good news is that because we'll be so caught up, we will allow us to have time to be able to get back to th- some of the projects. We've got a new thing that's going to be launching potentially soon that needs to get attended to sooner rather than later. And we need to re- di- re- we have to fix the database. It has to be done. This is going to cost us so much money because of this mistake. Um, and we just have to be better about avoiding it in the future. We have to set up the system to be smarter and analyze things better. So we have to get the database project fixed. However, And associated with that, we will have time, theoretically, over the course of the next two to three weeks to potentially get that done. And then after that point, when the Americano does show up, it's going to be production forever, it seems like. Because the problem is not only there, there are still some Americano orders coming in, despite the back order, and all of the Americano orders that have been ordered for those last two to three weeks will need to be done. And that's going to be a lot. And that concerns me a little bit. Now, it may not be as much as I had originally anticipated because it seems like our sales are going to be a lot lower than we'd originally forecasted, but it's still going to be a lot. So we've got a a brief interim here where sales are going to be low. We're not going to have a lot of money coming in. We're probably going to have to pull from the, the money that we've saved up. And to some extent, this is where I go back to saying at some level, it's a really good thing we had a bad or we have had a really good week, a month and a half, because that means that we have a little bit of money in the bank so that if sales get so bad that we're losing money, which we are, we'll be able to use that money to compensate for that shortfall rather than having to go borrow more money, which we can't really do anyway. So that's good news, right? We'll take the good news where we can get it. But we'll have a window after we get caught up here where our sales will be Low enough and enough of them will be Americano that we will be able to easily keep caught up with a small production team. We will be able to hopefully use that time to get some of the big projects done that need to get done that we have to get done soon. And then Americano is going to show up and we're going to have nothing but as much production as we possibly can manage from that point forward. And it's going to be a lot. And I'm a little nervous. Because if we have the equivalent of two to three weeks of sales of Americano, let's say that that's half of, let's say half of them still are Americano. I don't think it will be. Let's say maybe, okay, so let's say 40% of the sales of those three weeks are going to be Americano. And that all is going to get backlogged and backlogged and backlogged and backlogged. When the Americano shows up, we may still not be able to take the back ordered note off. We'd have to change the back ordered note to say a shorter lead time, but we may not be able to take the back ordered note off entirely because we may not have, we, like it's going to take time for us to get caught back up to the point where we can, can then send out Americano, right? Let's say we get Americano back. We take off the note on the website. People are going to order and they're going to expect that order in four days. But we've got three weeks of backlog we have to get through before we get to that order. So, <sighs> This problem is going to become expensive and it's going to really throw off the emperor's groove here, but what are you going to do? I am excited to see how we adapt to this challenge. We have done an amazing job, I think, as a company to be adaptive. We have. I've got a great team of people, all of them very intelligent, all of them very creative, and all of them dedicated to doing their best work. And I mean, what more can you ask from that? Like, there's nothing more that you could possibly want to make that happen. The company has really good people that are buying from us. We've had a lot of great customers, people who are often patient, people who, when we talk to them, they understand, right? We have a lot of understanding customers. 
We have a lot of people who are very, very, very good to us when we have issues and we explain them to them. They're very, very happy to help us in that they are willing to wait. They're willing to change their order to something different. They, they're happy to work with us. But you cannot please all the people all the time. And there will be some people in this process who I know will be very, very upset about this for one reason or another. And I've actually come to realize, I have come to realize in the time that I've done customer service and Mel, Mel has done a great job handling um, this is that there are people in this world who are angry about things that are unrelated to your company. They are angry about their boss at work or their day or the weather or their car broke down on the way to work. and you just happen to be the next person that they're talking to. And so whether they're really angry about their product at the level that they seem to be angry about it or whether that anger is just a vent for something else that's going wrong, it's, it's, that's more likely the case than not. Because I don't think there's that many people who are truly so upset about their journal, their leather journal, that they are actually angry in the way that they seem because that would be a little unreasonable in some cases. So I'm not saying that every customer is a problem. Most of our customers are excellent. Most of the people are very patient. Most of them are very understanding. There are a couple of people who are very upset and those people we have to take with a grain of salt because we have to be reasonable and understand that that might not be really what they're angry about. But either way, we will get through this disaster and it is a disaster. And we will move on to the next disaster because there's always another disaster coming down the pike and you just can't see it yet. Congratulations. That seems to be the world of small business. If it's not the government that's trying to make your life miserable, it's something else because there's always hardship in life. We live in a broken, sinful world and heaven's our home. But this is the thing we're living in right now, so we're going to get through it. And I thank you to all of you who have continued to buy from us during the back order. Those of you who have said, you know what, I'm willing to wait the two to three weeks. We really do appreciate it. It really does help us. It helps us financially to continue to weather the storm. It helps us to be able to have hope that this is going to get better soon. And it gives us an opportunity to say, how can we strategize once the leather does come in to do these orders in the most efficient way possible, right? There's opportunity abound. Um, so I'm, I'm, I appreciate all of you who've done that. Uh, for those of you who appreciate the podcast, who like the podcast, please be sure to subscribe and no hit the notification bell to get notified if you're on YouTube when we do new podcasts. I apologize for last week's hiatus. I did take a week off. Um, the short answer is I didn't have anything new at the time to talk about and we needed me in production more. So that was the why, but I'm hoping to continue to do more um, and I'm hoping to be on the schedule. So make sure to hit the notification bell to get notified. If you have any questions, concerns, things about your, your binder, journal, folio, your order that you've placed, an order you placed a long time ago, anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. We are always happy to talk. We'd love to reach out and, and talk with you guys. Send us an email, sales at murdycreative.co. You can use the contact form on the main page of the website. You can text us, 414-434-9001. You can give us a phone call between 4 p or 4 a what am I talking about? 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Central Time. 414-434-9001. Um, We're happy to talk on the phone. We love helping you guys. If for whatever reason you don't get a hold of us on the phone and you'd like to, leave us a voicemail. We will respond. We do call people back. Sometimes we miss the call and we call them back right away. It happens. Um, so appreciate that. If you have a quick question, um, you call, phone calling can be the fastest, right? Text also works great. If you think we deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow. A review is important in the world that we live in. People trust reviews a lot more than they trust us to tell them about the product. So, Go leave a review. MurdyCreative.co slash review will take you to, at this point, I think it's still Google. We're still having people leave reviews on Google. For a while, it was on Facebook. So, hey, first and foremost, leave a review in both places, Facebook and Google. It does help us in both places. Um, we swapped from Facebook to Google because we were using that to improve our SEO. So if you are going to leave us a great review and you'd like to help us out even further, make sure to include some keywords that you think might help, like journal, binder, folio, leather, custom, anything like that. Those are the things that Google does use the reviews to say, is this company a good thing to recommend to somebody? So feel free to check that out. If you like murdycreative.co slash reviews, you can also review, rev read our reviews um, on murdycreative.co slash reviews with an S. That's how you read them. Review without an S is how you leave a review. Um, you can also use murdycreative.co slash leave a review. That also works. Word of mouth is the best form of advertising. So tell your friends. We really appreciate it. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. I don't care. Tell everyone about the Murdy Creative Company. It really helps us. You can get a little something for doing that if you go check out a rewards program in the bottom left-hand corner of our website. We've continued to tweak it, make new things available. You can get free items now through that program. So go check that out, bottom left-hand corner of the website. It's amazing. 
If you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about, send them my way. I'm always looking for something to talk about. Like I said, last week, I didn't have anything new to talk about. So if you've got a question and you want to know something about the back end of the company, ask away. Leave it in the comments on YouTube. Send us an email. Give us a phone call, text message. There's a lot of different, I mean, send carrier pigeons for all I care. Like we, I'd love your question and I want to answer it. So definitely reach out if you got those. If you're looking for multiple items, binders, journals, folios, anything at all, we have bulk discounts available. You can get those bulk discounts by adding anything to your cart, mix and match to your heart's desire and hit checkout. It will automatically detect the quantity of the cart and it will apply the appropriate discount. It is purely based off the total cart quantity. So mix and match to your heart's desire. You have a quest if you want to get a custom engraved item. You can go to the website, go to virtually any product page, not all of them, but virtually all of them, and there's an add custom logo engraving button. It's blue. It's below the buy now button on the product page. If you click on that, it will take you to the custom version of that product. Be sure there to select the, the things you want and then hit add logo or add custom logo. Add logo engraving? I can't remember what the button says. Anyway, you click on that big blue button, it'll take you to the customizer. It'll open up that app. And in that app, which is best to view it on desktop, by the way, you can do it on mobile, but it's a tiny little screen to be able to edit something that's really big in real life. So on your desktop, when you're doing this, you can add an upgrade to logo. You can put whatever you want on there, text. You can resize, rotate, reposition, whatever you want to do. You can make it as convoluted as you want. And boy, have I seen some convoluted additions on the customizer. That could be a whole segment is just crazy and great. Anyway, add them to your cart, but the add cart button, you can change the quantity there. If you want to get more than one, there is no need to do that though. You can get just one. We have no minimum order quantities. You can get just one of something if you want to get just one of something. And it's a flat fee per item. There's no setup fees. So it's very simple. And that also, those custom items also are applicable for the discount. So if you end up getting, putting one in your cart that's custom engraved, you change the quantity to 15 or 20, it'll automatically detect that and it will, you know, it give you the bulk discount for that quantity. So if you're going to buy something for your company or your friend's company or your enemy's company, I don't care. That way you can do it that way and get a discount for it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day and goodbye.